Hey guys, welcome back to another video here on the channel. This week, Toyota sent me the 2024 Toyota Supra 3 liter premium with the manual transmission to test and review for you guys. Now, this is the very first time I've actually been in a Supra, driven a Supra, and had a lot of hands-on time with it. So I am very excited to uh, give you my overall impressions of this vehicle here in this video. Now, unfortunately, things did not go to plan as I was supposed to take this up to Road America to try out the 2024 Toyota Tacoma. But unfortunately, if you live in the region, then you know we got a decent amount of snow uh, just a couple days ago and uh, those plans were unfortunately scrapped. Now I did still make it up to drive the Tacoma for the very first time so make sure to stay tuned here on the channel for those videos uh, but in this one we're going to take a look at my likes and dislikes as usual over my about week with the Toyota Supra see what the things I love about it are see what the things that they could improve slightly and things that just really don't make sense because uh, well they should be found on nearly every new vehicle these days. So my first like here with the 2024 Supra has to do with the exterior styling or just the styling of the vehicle as a whole. Now it's crazy to think that this vehicle is on its fifth model year in production for the current generation. And uh, I still remember back in roughly 2020 when this vehicle debuted, people were so excited that they were bringing back the Supra nameplate. Yes, it does have a heavy influence with the BMW uh, partnership and engine underneath the hood and stuff like that. But uh, I still think this design is very fresh, very relevant. Uh, has a lot of you know the curves that the older generation Supras had as well and I think Toyota did a fantastic job styling the Supra and it will be interesting to see what they do for you know some sort of refresh with the vehicle uh, whether or not they do you know a heavy refresh an all new generation how long it stays pretty much identical to the 2020 model year but Toyota does have a long history of running vehicles you know out nearly a decade or a little bit more in some cases with nearly the same design so uh, we could just see exterior color change over the next several model years or a little bit uh, different in terms of tweaks but they do have the 45th anniversary edition coming out which does include a special orange exterior paint color but uh, this one is just the standard three liter premium with the manual transmission and it looks fantastic now my second like here with the Supra actually has to do with the interior design. Now this one is a very cool color combination. The red exterior with the hazelnut two-tone uh, black interior looks fantastic. Almost has those Ferrari vibes, if you will, uh, with the darker tan and of course the red outside. Uh, but I think the interior layout and overall ergonomics are very strong inside of the Supra. Uh, you can tell they actually put some thought into where things should go. The manual transmission actually has a few revisions on the center console as far as the layout and the positioning of the shifter and everything like that. The cup holders are offset to the passenger side of the vehicle so you aren't uh, wrestling with uh, small bottles or anything when you're trying to shift the manual transmission. And you know, I think all of the buttons and layout is very good. Now the only small tweaks I would make is maybe for the center infotainment screen as it is pretty much at a uh, flat, non-angled to the driver's side. I think it would make it a little bit more of a driver's car if they did slightly angle it towards the driver for easier access. But outside of that, you know, it's pretty typical sports car on the inside. Uh, everything is pretty much easy to reach. Things are a little bit tight here on the driver's side or I guess on the passenger side as well with the power seat adjustments. They are pretty crammed in here next to the actual plastics of the door sill. Uh, but I think the ergonomics and everything like that on the inside is very good and I do like this color combination quite a lot. Now my third like here with the Supra has to do with its driving dynamics and its powertrain setup. Now, of course, as many of you guys know by now, uh, this vehicle is pretty much in partnership with the current generation BMW Z4. So BMW got the Z4, Toyota got the Supra, and the Supra is powered by the very similar, and if not identical, three liter inline turbocharged six cylinder from BMW, and the six speed manual transmission was added for the 2023 model year here on the inline six versions. Now, I think the driving dynamics, the engine, you know, really suit this car quite well. Uh, the inline six, of course, from BMW is extremely smooth. It has instantaneous response, has extremely good output over the model years. Super has bumped up the output of this engine uh, from 335 up to 382. I'm not exactly sure if that was just an on-paper specification change or if there actually has been some tuning done to the engine to make it uh, make a little bit more power than originally in 2020. Uh, but regardless, the engine puts out a ton of power, has instantaneous throttle response, and uh, really there is not too much to complain about 
in that regard. And I think it even has a, a good homage to the old Jay-Z engines. Of course, uh, Toyota's own inline turbocharged six cylinder from the uh, 80s and 90s. More specifically, when it comes to the driving dynamics, I love the electronic dampers um, in the sport mode here in the center console, which changes a lot of the aspects with one single push of the button, including stiffening up the suspension, changing the throttle response, opening the valved exhaust. <laughs> and I'm sure changing the steering and some of the other uh, components of the vehicle quite a bit. Now my fourth like here with the Supra has to do with the manual transmission. I know I did just mention it in the last like, but I wanna go a little bit further. This vehicle is equipped with Toyota's IMT or Intelligent Manual Transmission Technology, which essentially helps you drive the vehicle uh, if you aren't as skilled of a driver as you know, say some of the experts or other people out there that really drive it on a track type of basis. Uh, but anyways, it does offer rev match downshift. It has anti-stall technology, uh, which will essentially uh, help you prevent stalling the vehicle from second gear on upwards. They really can't help you with first gear because, you know, well, you got to kind of get the vehicle up and going for that technology to help you. Uh, but I really like the rev match downshift feature where simply you can go into almost any gear at any speed. Yes, there are some limitations there. Act like an expert without having all of these skill sets of heel toe downshifting. So I uh, really do like the transmission. It's very notchy as well, has extremely good feel. You know, you really hear the clicks. And then uh, I also like the center console display that'll easily tell you exactly which gear you're in and has insane response time. So I think overall the transmission is very good, but um, I think either one, either the eight speed ZF or the manual transmission suits this car quite well. And finally, my last like here with the Supra has to do with its visibility here inside the cockpit. Now, if you've been in and around a new Supra, you'll know the cabin space and the window glass space is actually very small, but I'm happy to report back that the visibility outward is actually very, very good given those factors and limitations. So out the rear, you have a hatch type of design and there's actually quite a bit of visibility out the rear view mirror through that hatch, even though it has a very steep slope to it. Now, similarly, over the hood, you have a very long hood with that inline turbocharged six cylinder and makes up the majority of the vehicle when you look at it from the side. Uh, but anyways, the uh, visibility out the front is very good. You do have uh, parking sensors around the entire exterior of the vehicle so you can help with uh, getting close to objects. The only visibility I would say is poor or you know, kind of poor inside the vehicle is over your right shoulder with that pillar that slopes, of course, against the hatch and the uh, quarter panel there. So I would say that is the only aspect that I was you know, having a hard time with. Of course, this vehicle does come with blind spot detection. So that helps out with that blind spot quite a bit. But even so, you know, using your mirrors, adjusting everything accordingly, there is really no major blind spot or issues I had driving this vehicle, unlike I would say other sports cars of a similar size uh, where they do have, uh, you know, harder times with visibility. Now, my first dislike here with the Supra has to do with the cramped interior. Now, I know I said I really do like the interior layout and ergonomics, and I still stand by that statement. But this is more specific to when you have winter gear, heavy clothing on, as well as the pedal box gets a little bit cramped depending on the type of shoe you are wearing. So of course I had this vehicle over a week with a wide variety of temperatures. Some days I needed a you know pretty heavy winter jacket. Other days I needed simply a sweatshirt like I am wearing now. So depending on what you're wearing and how you have the seat positioned, you will have to adjust accordingly and uh, everything to what type of clothing you're wearing. Luckily, it does have power adjustable bolsters here with the premium trim on both of the front seats, so you can simply uh, stiffen or loosen them as needed, slide the seat forward and back, do all of your adjustments. I had no issues with the amount of adjustment the seat had, although I would like the cushion tilt uh, leg support that would be nice for additional support underneath your thigh. Outside of that, I think the power adjustments are fine. Now, I also mentioned the pedal box gets quite cramped depending on what shoes you're wearing. And this is more in response to the clutch pedal as well as the throttle. So uh, depending on what shoes and you know how the width is and everything, your foot will likely be resting up nearly on the carpet for the throttle all the way against the center console. Now I could see this being a long-term wear issue if you get used to brushing the carpet with your right foot all the time using the throttle, but 
Uh, with normal shoes, I would say it's not really a big issue and you would get used to it on a day-to-day -day basis. Now with the clutch pedal, the dead pedal actually overlaps uh, just a few inches over. So again, depending on where your foot is positioned on the clutch pedal, I had a few instances when I was driving this car where my foot was more on the uh, hanging over to the left of the clutch pedal. So when I went to depress it fully, the dead pedal would actually stop my foot uh, at the same height where the dead pedal starts and I actually had to readjust my foot, take my foot off the clutch, move it over so I could actually depress the clutch pedal all the way. So. Uh, that is just like my only small complaints. Of course, the interior width isn't that uh, large inside this cabin either. You know, it's very small. Two people with the additional storage space might fill this car up very easily. So certain aspects, including the pedal box and the seats can get a little bit cramped uh, depending on not only what type of shoes you're wearing, but also the exterior clothing as well. Now my second dislike here with the Supra has to do with the infotainment system, more specifically the fact that it does not support Android Auto at all. Now from my understanding, this is BMW's last generation iDrive system, iDrive 6. Uh, the Z4, believe it or not, actually has the latest generation of iDrive, which does support both Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. But unfortunately, this vehicle, the Supra, only still supports wireless Apple CarPlay and does not support Android Auto at all. Now, given I do have an Android phone, it was a little bit cumbersome to actually use Symphotainment um, and listen to music via the Bluetooth technology. It really does not work that well. You do have the iDrive controller here to the right of the manual shifter, uh, which does help with navigating certain menus. And this vehicle is a touchscreen as well, so you can simply touch the infotainment and it has a decent layout to it, but I would say I would like this improved. Uh, I think Android Auto would be much preferable in my case to use for streaming apps instead of just using the Bluetooth. Uh, because when you do go to the Bluetooth menu, scroll down here to my phone here, the menu is very, very basic. There's really not a lot of information and it is very clunky to use and you don't even get album art or anything like that. So uh, the fact that there's no Android Auto here in this vehicle is a big miss in my opinion. Now my third dislike here with the Supra has to do with the fact that it does not have a heated steering wheel. Now I understand a lot of people probably aren't gonna be driving this vehicle in the dead of winter with snow on the ground given ground clearance is quite tight and you know it comes from the factory with summer tires. But anyways, Toyota still only offers this vehicle with uh, heated front seats. It is a three-stage design. They heat up quite quickly. But you know, given my week with this vehicle with the wide ranging temperatures, uh, you know, here it is dry outside. It's in the mid 40 degrees sun shining. It still would be nice to have a heated steering wheel on those chilly mornings. So that would be a nice addition I could uh, recommend to them over the next couple years. If they wanna add any additional content to this vehicle, simply add a heated steering wheel and that would make overall day-to-day -day usability uh, three seasons out of the year much better. Now my fourth dislike here at the Supra has to do with the volume knob. Now this is actually a something I discovered while simply driving down the road trying to use the volume knob in the infotainment system, and that is the fact that the detent for the power slash volume knob is simply too soft and is easily pushed when trying to adjust the volume up or down. So by this, I was simply driving down the road, you know, 40, 50, whatever miles an hour. If you wanna adjust the volume either up or down, you simply rotate this knob right here. But I found myself uh, actually pushing in on the knob for the power switch. So pushing it in like this accidentally because the suspension and the bumps on the road was causing my hand to wiggle around. So uh, this happened nearly every single time I drove the car and I actually just got used to using the steering wheel volume controls with uh, these plus or minuses right here because I was running into that issue so frequently. Not exactly sure if that is just pertinent to this particular Supra or if that's a common issue on the forums that people complain about since 2020. Not exactly sure, but I would like Tim to, to adjust the detent to be a little bit stiffer here on the volume knob to prevent accidental bumpage and turning the uh, stereo system on and off when not intended. Now my fifth dislike has to do with the digital gauge cluster as well as that infotainment screen. Now here sitting in the shade, it's really not a big deal, but I found them to actually get somewhat washed out by the sunlight coming inside the vehicle, depending on which angle you're driving, where the sun is in the sky, 
et cetera. There's a bunch of different lighting conditions uh, where this may or may not happen, but it was more specific to the gauge cluster and using sunglasses is the gauge cluster will get washed out a little bit. Then when you throw on a pair of sunglasses, it becomes even uh, dimmer or harder to see. And I found myself, you know, wishing it was just brighter and more lighting environments. Now, um, I wouldn't say that was a deal breaker whatsoever. I did just come across it a handful of times where I'm like really struggling to see uh, the actual gauge cluster, you know, say the sun is, you know, coming here in the side window straight on th to the display. That would ca cause issues in most vehicles out there, but I think they could make the contrast of brightness just a little bit better if I had to guess, uh, given the, you know, Z4 and this is BMW technology uh, is a convertible. You'd think they'd have the display as bright as possible, but uh, maybe there is a difference that I'm not aware of. Now, my sixth dislike has to do with the ingress and egress. Now, I realize this is a sports car, so that's not going to be a strong suit for this vehicle, but given it's not a convertible, has a fairly low roof line um, and a pretty thick one at that, it did cause me issues here specifically with hitting my head uh, when getting in and out of the vehicle. Now, I'll go ahead and illustrate my normal ingress and egress for you guys so you guys can see it here in the uh, you know person. And as you can probably see there, my head just scraped the headliner, uh, which luckily is pretty padded, so it's actually not a big issue. Uh, but I did hit my head, you know, a number of times going like this, you know, inside this vehicle. And again, that's kind of just the overall design that you're going to get here with a hard top coupe like this. Uh, of course, if you have a convertible, you may or may not get rid of all of this, so it might not be an issue. And of course, if you have the top down, it's not going to be an issue because it's wide open. You have all the headspace in the world. Uh, but I would say, you know, depending on your height, uh, depending on whether or not you have spinal fusion like I do, so your back is physically fused in place and you can't really bend it, it could be a problem and a deal breaker for you if you don't want to deal with hitting your head on a daily basis. So uh, do keep that in mind, ingress and egress for certain types of body types or, you know, the height of you or whatever might change your opinion of this vehicle. But uh, overall, I would say it's not a deal breaker. I didn't have too, too many issues, just something that you do have to get used to. Now my seventh and final dislike here with the Supra actually has to do with the fact that I was not able to find an exterior trunk or hatch release button here on the back of the vehicle. Now I think this isn't a huge deal once again, uh, given they did locate a trunk release button here on the inside of the driver's side door. So simply you push that, it releases the hatch, and then you're able to actually open the lift gate and get easier access to the storage capacity. And of course you can actually use the key fob as well, which is sitting inside the vehicle as there is a dedicated hatch hatch release button on the key. So um, I would just like to see a little bit of a button here on the back of the vehicle, maybe underneath the Supra logo or something like that, uh, much like that of the Chevy Corvette or other vehicles that do have an exterior hatch release button. Uh, but unfortunately, Toyota or BMW or whoever made the decisions as far as that goes, uh, left that button out on the backside, uh, which would be a nice addition to have uh, just for easier access to storage. So I think that's going to do it here for all of my likes and dislikes with the 2024 Toyota Supra 3 liter premium with the manual transmission. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and or found it helpful. If you did, make sure to hit that like button below. It greatly helps out the channel these videos. Subscribe if you haven't already. And let me know your likes and dislikes here. If you happen to own this generation of Toyota Supra or been behind the wheel quite a bit, uh, do you agree or disagree with anything that I mentioned in this list? Or is there anything that I omitted from this list that you think is very relevant to anybody that might be shopping for a new or used Toyota Supra? Leave those down in the comment section below. Always interested to hear other people's opinions on it. And make sure to stay tuned for a driving impressions and driving review uh, that I'm actually going to film right after this one where I will get behind the wheel, set up a couple cameras on the inside and give you my thoughts and opinions on how the 2024 Toyota Super drives. But anyways, I wanna give a huge thanks to Toyota for sending this vehicle out for me to test and review for you guys. A little bit of a bummer that I was not able to take it up to Road America. Uh, of course, I wouldn't have been able to drive it on the track anyway, but that may be an opportunity here in a couple months at the Mama Spring Rally, uh, which I am looking forward to very much, just like last Last year and uh, driving this vehicle or you know a different Supra out on the track on Road America but make sure to stay tuned for those additional videos here on the Supra coming over the next several days and as always hope to see you guys in the next one.